Hey y'all, Emily here with an updated walkthrough of my mixing template system. I'm going to show you how to get the most out of this template and how amazing it really can be. This demonstration is in Pro Tools, but it is the same template for any of the DAWs that you are using. I have this exact template available for Pro Tools, Luna, Logic Pro, and Studio One. There's also a Pro Tools version that has a lot uh, more plugins other than UAD in case you are needing that. They all work exactly the same, so let's just jump in, give you a pretty in-depth walkthrough on how you use this template and how you can get the most out of it. So, I've got a session here with some audio tracks. This is a jazz song. A lot of you have been requesting me do some mixing tutorials and courses on jazz. So I thought for this video, I would just import some jazz tracks here. So let's just have a quick little listen to get a taste of that. The sunny I just love that classic jazz sound. So this is what a typical session for you might look like. This is either after you've recorded your own song or you've got some tracks to mix. If you're doing mixing services, anything like that, these are your audio tracks and there's nothing on them. This is a very blank session. I just imported these tracks a few minutes ago. The first thing that I like to do what I like to recommend is to go up to your I.O. setting here and check your buses. So if you've been using a bunch of stuff, maybe in the last session or even on this session, we want to kind of clean that all up. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to default and get rid of a lot of the things that I'm not using. I don't want any of this stuff. I just want the buses to show. So that looks pretty good right there. So I'm going to click OK. So now when we route these, the only thing that's going to show up here. And so when I import the mixing template, everything should be in order and you're not going to be trying to find like where to connect all these things. So next thing, click the last track in your session so that the template will be imported to the right of that. And in Pro Tools, we're just going to go over here and we're going to go to import session data. This is really important. This is how you will need to merge and import your template, your mixing template to in Pro Tools. You need to click session data. And then you will select the template that you want to import. Wherever you have that saved, whether that's in an external hard drive on your computer, just somewhere nice and labeled, nice and organized where you can find it. So once you hit OK, you will have this import session data window. Right in here are your tracks. These are all the tracks that are included in the template. And I just want to select all of them. So I'm going to click on the first one here, Vocal Crush. I'm going to go all the way down to the last track. I'm going to hit Shift on my keyboard and then hit that last track so that all of them are selected. Now, if you'll notice right here in your sample rate conversion, the template is in 96K. That's perfectly fine because the destination sample rate is what the audio tracks are and it's going to convert the template to the audio tracks. So then the only thing other that the only other thing we need to do is hit OK. And it might take just a second for all of those template tracks to be imported. All right, so that looks good. Once you have the template pulled in, if you have any plugins that look like this, that means that you either do not own them or that you haven't activated them. You need to update them or something like that. So this template, obviously, you it's not you buying the plugins. 
These are the plugins that I'm using currently. They're the ones that I really like using. I think that, you know, for me, they just work the best. But that's all opinion, right? You learn the plugins that you have, work them, see how they work the best with audio. So what we have to do next is, is merge our audio tracks to the template. So for drums, I put all of my drum tracks into the drum group here. Now, one thing that you'll need to do to listen to this is make sure that you have this track input monitor button activated. It'll be green when it's turned on. That's because this is how we're going to monitor everything that's going through our template all through our mix bus and out through our print track here. Now, something cool that you can do is if you have a rough mix that you want to compare, you know, this final mix, your mixing session, you can drag that audio of that stereo print of your rough mix here. And so when you're mixing, you're listening with this turned on your track input monitor. And then if you want to check against the rough mix or some sort of reference track, you just unselect that and then it will start playing the audio that you have have drug in here. To listen to our mix turned on, to listen to the mix that you have pulled in, off. Okay. So let's just take a listen real quick, make sure that our audio is going through the drum track. Okay, so we're getting audio through there, so we know we're connected. So let's go ahead and connect the rest of the tracks here. Bass goes to the bass mono here. I've also got a bass stereo. Let your guitars. Got a few guitar tracks, but since we only have one, I'm going to go ahead and select Electric Guitar 1, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to start hiding and make inactive the tracks that I'm not going to be using, just so we can clear things up. Won't need these two. And we'll go back to merging. So Piano, I'm going to put that in my keys group. Now, I've got three different sets of horns here. So what I can do, I have strings, horns, and pads. So why don't I just use those? So the first group here are trumpet. I'll select that. And I'm going to put that in string. And then I'm going to relabel that trumpets. Easy breezy. So see, you can, you know, not every time is the template going to be exactly the tracks that you have. So we can change things like this. It's very simple. So the second one is a saxophone. I'm going to put that in horns because that's the next one up. So horns now become sax. Okay. Third one here. We'll go into the next one, which was sax pads. And so we've got trombone. So pads now becomes trombones. And obviously you can name them however you want. You can abbreviate them however you want. Maybe we'll do that. Tromb. Okay. So the next thing we have is just this vocal track. And that will go into the lead vocal. Actually, so our lead vocal, 
this is a little different. I'm going to first put this into my lead vocal one. Now there is a lead vocal two with this in case you have two lead vocals or if you have two vocals that you want to treat the same way and I'll have duplicate parallels, duplicate tracks, duplicate everything for that. It's just inactive right now, but you could activate that over here on the side. But for just this one lead vocal, we've got our lead vocal parallel. So this lead vocal is going through all of these equally. And then this goes out to our lead vocal A track here, or lead vocal group track. So let's go ahead and clean this stuff up. We don't have any of these tracks. We have nothing going through them. So we will hide and make those inactive. So now let's make sure everything is going through our group tracks. And you might be able to hear a difference. Since I've got these turned down, you won't be able to hear as much on the lead vocal, but see the difference just by merging this with the template. The sunny honeymoon. So much better just just by adding it through the processing that I've got going on and it's not it's not a whole lot it's just the way we're doing it that's why I always refer to this as a mixing template system you know that the specific things that I have on here is not the magic it's not what's getting us to that radio quality sounding mix it's how we're doing it so just by going through all of that so much better I've got a few things on the mix bus here. This is just what I really like. And you can go through all the settings on that. If you have these plugins, they are highly recommended. So what I want to do now is connect my parallels. So we have our lead vocal parallels here, but that's not where this amazing template ends. We have what everybody is so interested in is these four parallels right here. These are the pre-calibrated parallel buses that come with this template already calibrated for you. How that happens is this drum bus, the plugin that I'm using, is one of my favorite stereo kind of bus compressors. That's the Neve 33609. There's a couple of different versions of this out there. This just happens to be my favorite. So what's happening here is that I have this pre-calibrated and this is all pre-calibrated for you. If you're getting any of the templates, the Pro Tool template, the Luna template, the Studio One template, the Logic Pro template, everything has been set for you. You don't have to do anything. Now I've got PDFs and a step-by-step -step guide and I believe a video in one of them that shows you step by step how to calibrate these. So you'll get that when you purchase the template. And if you purchase the Modern Mix Vocal Mixing Course, I have a whole video on how you calibrate your parallel buses, if that's something that you're interested in. So what happens is, is I know that if I'm getting just, just under four, if I'm going, if I'm touching four, pretty consistently or going over it, then I might back off a little bit on my sins. So I know that just, just about right here where the cursor is, I'm going to be getting from this return back to my overall mix about 1 dB. It's pretty accurate. 1 dB of compression, 1 dB of gain coming back from this track into the overall mix. Same thing with the drum crush here that I've got with this fatso. I'm trying to get the most optimal sound that I think is beneficial in parallel on a consistent basis. And then I have that returning 1 dB as well. Same thing with the music bus. And I'll show you all of these group right here are being sent pre-fader to this 33609. And in that same vein, the vocal bus, the vocal parallel compression is being sent right here. 
and I just happen to like this. I just wanted a little bit different color. It's a very low ratio, but it's just something that just kind of beefs up the vocal without really making it sound louder. It just really sits, makes it sit so well in the mix, but so present. Doesn't sound like it's separated from the rest of the tracks, your music, like it's sitting on top, like a karaoke track. Just makes the vocal sit so well in the mix. And now the unique part about it is, is that that one is adding back in 2 dB to the overall mix. And these are all these are all going to the mix bus. So let's merge. The first thing we need to do is send that to the drum bus. And I'm going to go ahead and just put that to zero and set that in pre. Now I want to send that to all of these. And when you get your mixing template, there is also a PDF on how you set this up. Step by step, right there in text on where you put these, which ones you put, where you send them to. So. Next up, we don't have many drums, but what we do have is a couple of shell drums. When I mean shells, I mean the actual drums, not overheads, not cymbals, just the actual drums. And I want to send those to the drum crush. And keep in mind, the drum crush is not something that you will use every time. You're just going to have to listen. You're going to have to see if it's if it's beneficial or not. If it's adding too much weight or, or just something that doesn't sound pleasant, then we're not going to send that to the drum crush and we don't have to use it. So now let's take a listen to our drums. And we're going to check our drum parallel here. The sunny honeymoon So there you go. So let's check. Since the drums are a little bit quiet, let's beef things up a little bit. See how we're doing on the drum crush. The sunny honeymoon, another season. So that's making it sound a little bit more present. I like what that's doing. So I'm going to keep the drum crush in. Now, the next thing that you've noticed is I've got this music bus. So let's see where it's hitting on this 33609. So let's turn up all the music bus tracks. Let's see where we're at on our compression. The sunny honeymoon, so we're a little heavy. So let's pull back on that a little bit. I'll just do it on one here. Maybe we go up just a tad bit. Just trying to find a balance between all of them. So once you adjust these, and it's hitting where we want. The sunny honeymoon, another season. So I think the keys may be a little heavy on it. So maybe we just pull down the keys a little bit. The sunny honeymoon, Perfect. So that is how you use the parallel, the pre-calibrated parallel tracks. Now, we've got to address the vocals here. What I like to do is I believe that there are three 
components to professional radio quality sounding vocals. And that's your tape warmth right here, saturation, and heavy compression. Now, when I say heavy compression, this is what I mean. The sunny honeymoon, another season. I want it to be hitting minus 10 at least. And then check my saturation here. What I like to do is hit it pretty hard and then we pull down the output of that. So that's not overpowering. And then we're adding some tape warmth. The sunny What I like for it to do is tickle the tin. The sunny honeymoon, another season, another reason. Just like that. And then we blend to taste. The sunny honeymoon, another season. So, depending on how you like to EQ things, the kind of compression, that's up to you. These are the basic fundamentals of this mixing template system and how you merge that. And that's what I wanted to go over with you. You know, whether you like to use a plate or a chambers, that's completely up to you. These are the basic setups that's going to get you and your mixes to that next level. And I just wanted to kind of go over a little bit of that uh, in case, you know, you were wondering, well, what's, what's, what's the big deal with this template? How is this different than everything else? And the main thing is, is that this is a system. This isn't just a template with a ton of plugins caked everywhere so that you can go through each one and, and then be even more confused on which effect you want to use or this and that, a compressor. You know, a, dist a distressor works well in stereo as it does in mono. I love the 3609 in parallel. It's great for things like drums and, and music that have, have been spread out coming from stereo group tracks. You know, I like to use these certain things because I know them and I know how they work best. So anyways, y'all, if you have any questions about this mixing template system, please feel free to reach out. You can email me or leave a comment on this video. You can check out the reviews on it. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment, leave me an email. I'd be more than happy to answer that for you. All right. Thanks for watching, y'all. We'll talk soon.